In this video, I'm going to take a look at cohabiting couples and more specifically, cohabitation agreements. There was an act brought in there into Irish law in 2010 called the Civil Partnership and Certain Rights of Cohabitants Act of 2010. This was intended to give civil partners and cohabiting couples certain rights. A cohabiting couple must have been in an intimate relationship for five years or two years if they have a dependent child. So if you are in a cohabiting situation or a cohabiting arrangement, this video will be of interest to you perhaps. Also, if you're thinking, if you're thinking of moving in with somebody else and living together and you're not married, this will also be of interest because you can have a cohabitation agreement drawn up which can really do two things. One, it can uh, determine or govern how you are going to deal with financial and other matters during and on the termination of the cohabitation arrangement. So you might come to an arrangement in relation to the existing property that you might have, joint property that you might own, the contributions that you might make to the running of the house and so on. Alternatively, you can have a cohabitation agreement which will set aside or opt out of the provisions of the Civil Partnership and Certain Rights of Cohabitants Act 2010 because uh, Section 202 makes provision for a cohabitants agreement being valid if they have uh, cohabitants have independently or received independent legal advice uh, and so on. Its agreement is, is in writing, it's signed by both cohabitants and so forth. So it's an agreement that can be entered into by the cohabitants and it would make provision for the likes of legal advice, sole property, joint property, financial disclosure, separate property, opting out of applying for an order for redress as provided in section 173 of the Act, opting out of an order provided in section 194 of the Act. One of those sections deals with maintenance, the other deals with a claim, potential claim on the estate of a deceased cohabitant. It would also deal with the likes of personal maintenance, division of living expenses, children including maintenance, guardianship, parenting arrangements, it would deal with debts, it would deal with succession and inheritance, termination of the relationship and what will happen, and the termination of the deed or the cohabitation agreement. The agreement then could also schedule or list the separate property of the parties and provide for the parties living together with contributions to be made by the parties in an agreed proportion. So essentially a cohabitation agreement in Irish law is now valid. It's recognised in section 202 of that particular act and there's two broad ways you can use the cohabitation agreement. One is to opt out of the provisions of the act itself or two, you can set out in the agreement how you're going to manage your affairs, how the cohabitants are going to manage their affairs during the cohabitation term and at the end of it. Hope you find this video useful. My secretary Josephine told me to make it. She said I needed to do this one because um, a lot of people didn't know this and uh, she obviously knows or she does know, we all know I suppose, plenty of people living together who would not be married and if the relationship breaks down, if the cohabitation situation comes to an end and the relationship breaks down badly, things can get a bit messy things can cut up rough quite frankly and there is provision in that act for one cohabitant to seek uh, various orders from the other cohabitant by reason of their living together and under this act provided they've been in an intimate relationship for five years or two years if they have a dependent child. Hope you find this video useful. If you do give it a thumbs up down below. Thanks a lot.